if we look at the hype around fintech. Fintech was supposed to have killed banks and insurance companies and fund managers and da 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 and, and that hasn't happened. But I think what does happen is it moves society along for, for the good because we learn what not to do, what to focus upon. So whether it's fintech, dot-com bubble, DeFi, basic business principles ultimately are going to have to apply. And asset valuations that defy logic, defy logic, uh, I'm afraid um, are, are not going to be sustainable. That, that, won't, that won't work. Do me a favor, picture your favorite crypto app or exchange. Got it? Now I have five questions for you. Question number one, does your favorite app or exchange have fiat on and off ramps that do not charge you crazy fees? Question number two, does your app actually help you time your investments with machine learning and algorithms? Question number three, does your app or favorite exchange connect to multiple exchanges to get you best rates, best liquidity, but also mitigate the risk of a central failure of one single order book? Question number four, is your favorite app or exchange Swiss made, but also licensed and regulated in the EU so that you can feel 100% reassured, but also sleep well at night? Question number five, is your favorite app or exchange fully aligned with your principles and values, 100% community centric and not VC backed? So if your answer to any of these questions is a no, what are you waiting for? Download the Swissborg Wealth app, join the new era of wealth management and enjoy the ride. Dear crypto community blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites, the no BS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And today, guys, I am so excited to have not only a classy, but a true gentleman in the crypto space and a personal friend of mine, thanks to the previous show, which if you haven't seen, don't forget to watch tons of great information and a real timeless interview. So it's with great pleasure that I welcome again the awesome Max Contelia, co-founder of Zilliqa. It's a pleasure to have you, Max. Alex, so good to see you. So really good nice to, to see, see you. you. Really, elegance and class are the first words that come up to my mind when I think of you, Max. And it was such a great show to have you last time. Thank you. I, I still remember it very, very well. It was really cold that day. I remember coming back from Singapore, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but we had this to keep us warm. Exactly, exactly. So, Max, I heard something really funny. I heard that you are a huge fan of 007. Is that true? It's very true. Who told you? <laughs> uh, Clarisse. Or actually, the walls. The walls. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, I, I, I have to admit that I am. And uh, and and yes, it's uh, it's it's a it's an absolute passion. I um, I, I I imagine I am James Bond. <laughs> you have the demeanor in my wildest dreams, of course. <laughs> but but yes, um, are you are you a fan? Yeah, I, I watched him as a kid. My dad was really into the early uh, James Bonds. Who is your favorite character, by the way? And there have been so many talented actors, you know, taking that role. Oh, for me, there are there are so many, but but I, I like I like some of the nasty villains, uh, you know, Goldfinger. Um, some of the nasty villains are, are my are my favorites because because they had so much soul, so much character and they were so evil. But <laughs> um, but good always won in the end. Right. Yeah. And uh, I think that's a lesson for life, though. There are many lessons for life. Yeah, yeah. And that's and one of them. Definitely, definitely. And speaking of life, like these days, you know, in terms of our crazy crypto life, right? I wanted to kick off with, I'm sorry, it's a really mainstream topic, but it's also fascinating to hear different perspectives. But as you know, the whole DeFi, some people may call bubble, uh, has kind of emerged. 
And uh, there are lots of pros and cons to this new movement since we've talked last time. It wasn't that big last time, but uh, how was your overall reaction this year of like DeFi is kind of the main, you know, headline in the news? I believe in, 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 the, in the movement. I think that decentralized finance, sometimes I call it fintech on a blockchain, has a huge future, but we are literally at, at birth and we have a very long time to, to, to go. Um, things are changing within, within days, right? So mm -hmm. uh, just as an example on my way here, I was, I was looking at some messages on a channel that I belong to from somebody who was maybe slightly showing off about how he had been using yield farming, which we'll talk about if you like, mm -hmm. yes, please. To, to make some incredible gains. And literally the same person 24 hours later is sending emojis with his head in his hands because he's, he's, he's lost a lot, of, a lot of money. So I think, uh, you know, j joking aside, I think that we are at the very early stages. There is a lot of maturity that has to be reached. And in the last 24 hours, you know, Alex, I can't help but reminisce about the early 90s. You know why? Because in the early 90s, when people started to learn that they could use these things called futures and options, mm. and futures and options started becoming a retail tool, I remember people losing the shirts off their backs. Mm. Um, you know, a little bit after they 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 bought the latest Porsche or whatever, and and this this time is so reminiscent of the early 90s because if you don't really know what you're doing and and you know we we all we all should heed those those warning bells but we don't right that's yeah. human nature there's a lot of complexity at play here and i would say more complexity than than when we first started learning about retail futures and options even because the technology today is a little bit cumbersome and if you're going to do this thing that we, we're calling yield farming, for example, you, I, I, don't, mean, I don't, don't mean to be rude to anybody, but you, you, you've got to be a little bit of a nerd to actually understand yeah. how you go about doing these things because they are, they are not, not first nature to, to most of us. So whilst I'm really excited and actually whilst people have been talking about the last week or so uh, in terms of how these uh, these memes you know I won't mention any food names let's, <laughs> let's, let's, keep, you... let's keep that hidden away but I, th I think you might know what I'm talking yeah, about absolutely. Um, I think that whilst we can laugh at the utility of these things I actually applaud what we're seeing because we are seeing people in the crypto to crypto space being able to do things that we couldn't even do a year ago. Okay, so fully decentralized, people are able to launch their tokens and immediately go to market, immediately interface with the with the with, with the you know the um, the power broker, the person mm. that actually holds the power yeah. protocols, for example. Yeah. And we're able to now do this immediately. We don't need venture capitalists anymore. And um, whilst I think that some of these things may not have a very long life, mm. I don't know, I think that we have to applaud the fact that we can make things work in a truly decentralized fashion. Mm. Think about it. And go to market with, with ideas almost instantly. Mm. Buyer beware, of course, comes to mind straight away I, when i think about the chap on on the uh, on the on the channel i was referring to earlier but but the fact that we can do all of this now is i i think groundbreaking so i i'm i'm a huge fan um at silica certainly we um you know we we've stated it's a stated intent but we uh as you know you know we take our times to do things properly Yes, we get criticized for it, but I, I, you know my style. I would yeah. much rather do that, get things right, and then partic participate in this movement. But um, 
I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited. There's so many good things that you just shared there. I think you hit the nail on the head really when explaining this analogy of futures and options in the beginning of the retail sphere. In terms of analogies, could we also kind of, you know, kind of show that DeFi is similar to the dot-com bubble where, you know, whatever is DeFi would gain momentum, whatever had a dot-com back in the days would gain momentum. Is it similar or quite different in your view? It is, it is very, very similar because we have hype, we have bubbles, we have asset valuations that don't really make sense sometimes. And we saw all of that in the, in the dot-com bubble and, and, and that bubble burst rather badly. I remember it extraordinarily well. Um, but since then, there's been another one too. Because, for example, if we look at the hype around fintech, mm. fintech was supposed to have killed banks and insurance companies and fund managers and da di da di da di da, and and that hasn't happened. Okay, so I think that 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 yes, we um, we, we see these hype bubbles from from time to time, and more people get burned by them than than people. Who, who profit from, from them. But I think what does happen is it moves society along for, for the good because we learn what not to do, what to focus upon. Um, as you know, Alex, I've been an entrepreneur all my life and I can't help but go back to basic business principles. So whether it's fintech, um, dot com bubble, whether it's uh, now, you know, DeFi, basic business principles ultimately are going to have to apply and asset valuations that defy logic defy logic uh, I'm afraid um, are, are not going to be sustainable that that won't that won't work a lot of people say that that 90% I've seen online you know some headlines on coin telegraph saying that 90% of defi projects will go to zero just like the dot com bubble but maybe the fang stocks will emerge right the facebooks the amazons the googles uh, and, and provide uh, great technology. Is that how you see it? Right now we're experimenting. Uh, a lot of them will go to zero, but there will be some great success stories coming out of it. I, I do. So one other data point that, that I'd like to share with you is that this crisis we're in, so let's, let's also get the, you know, the, the COVID crisis that's going on at the moment yeah. in, into play here. This crisis is unlike any other I've, I've seen, and I've, I've seen a few. During the 2008-2009 financial meltdown, everything was down. Literally everything was down. There weren't terribly many winners. And this one's different. This crisis, I think, is a crisis of unemployment. I think it's a, it's, it's a crisis of, of, of travel and, and tourism, for, for sure. But what I'm seeing, like a lot of other investors are, are now talking about, is bifurcation. Mm. I'm seeing businesses just absolutely skyrocket, absolutely zoom. There you go. Um, <laughs> some of these things I think are, 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 are built into us. But, but, but at the same time, I'm seeing businesses go to zero, literally go to ground zero, and not a lot in the middle. And so I'm seeing at the moment um, startups growing like wildfire because they they've grasped the future and and the future is going to be very different from how it was pre this crisis we we know that especially in terms of the world of work and i'm even seeing large corporations um making decisions in weeks that would would take them historically 18 months to 2 years to make and so um, this, I think, is amazing. This is an amazing time to start a business. And, um, you know, crises are great times to start businesses, whether people are being forced out because they don't have a job or because they're just desperately keen to change something and make it better. A crisis is a great, uh, you know, is, is, is something you shouldn't waste. Um, and look at how many businesses were born out of crises. Microsoft, you know, was born in a crisis. More recently, you've seen incredible businesses growing, you know, from Airbnb to Netflix to, to so many other businesses that are now huge being born out of crises. So 
This is a great time to, to be building business. I think in the crypto space, uh, absolutely the same applies. Whether you've got a, an interesting idea for a decentralized app or, or you're going to do something interesting in, in decentralized finance, it's just a great time to start a, start a business, mm. I, I, I feel. But it's those that really understand where the need lies and that are bold enough and brave enough to do big, big things like, like you, you've done, right? I'm really proud of what you and Cyrus have done. Oh, um, so and I'm really proud, obviously, what, of, of what firms like Zillica have done too, by being bold, by sticking, sticking with it. Um, so in terms of all of that, I think, I think the DeFi movement is going to, there's going to be a lot of innovation. innovation yeah. So much innovation. Yeah, that's such a good, good way to look at it because there's been so much innovation. You're right. In the past six months, it's actually moved us forward a lot. And uh, but it's good to know what you're saying about the risks, right? Like the smart contracts that lack auditing. We cannot trust all of the systems or pools like we can trust Andres with Wi-Fi, right? Yeah, the the risks are, the risks are big, and they're in bright red, mm -hmm. and. When we look at the, the risks that exist, we, we have, I believe today we have something like eight billion dollars TVL or, or you know total value locked up in in DeFi, yeah. and and that's that's just doubling and trebling every few months at the moment. Okay, so that may not seem like a very large number, but it is when you compare it to what it was about a year ago. You know, I remember four hundred million. Um, for, for example. And so we have to look at the risk. Smart contract security, essential. Auditable smart contracts, absolutely essential. Because without that, we are going to see bugs leading to hacks. We're going to see man in the middle attacks. And we've got to be cognizant of, of, of the security layer. I think it's, it's, it's vital. I think that that mainstream adoption of DeFi, for example, I'm going to be a little bit contrarian mm -hmm. for, for a moment with sure. you. So whilst we talk about trustless mechanisms, a lot of us have grown up with, with, uh, you know, with centralized mechanisms. And I do talk to people in the, in the big bad world of financial services, traditional financial, financial services, who cannot get to grips with the fact that you trust code and you don't trust a central party. So I think, I actually think that this is a risk because we have to educate people to understand that, that we can do things, we can transact, we can actually transact significant amounts of, of capital without having to trust a central party. So I think getting people to grips with that in itself and educating yeah. people, which is something I try and do, is very important. It's not something people talk about, but I think it's very important. The other risk I think um, that, that we've seen just in the last week is, is just um, the cost to play, right? So again, I'm, I'm, you know, we, we've all heard in the last, last week or so about people paying huge gas fees to be able to transact. You know, and right now it's a wealthy man's game yield farming, right? Because yeah. if you go, if you want to just try it out with a hundred dollars, you're someone's younger, doesn't have much disposable income, it's impossible, right? I tried buying a, a token through one of the pools and it was $60 in gas fees. So if you have a hundred dollars, then it costs you $60 in gas fees. How much is going to take you to actually, so I think you have a really good point and, and that's not what we're trying to achieve, right? We Isn't Finance 2.0 about having a completely inclusive ecosystem? Correct. If, if we are going to make financial services available to, to, to all and be inclusive, as you say, then, of course, you know, the, the, the whole premise of, of um, cryptocurrency was that it would make money, trans money transfer, you know, transfer of value, a um, very low cost, mm. you know, and that, that, that was the original premise. And if that starts to go away, then either the financial services that we can, we can offer in a decentralized fashion are going to slim down. Mm. So all these derivative style products are going to disappear very quickly, or we have to find ways of, of making that better. Mm. 
This leads me to one other point I'd, I'd like to make. Um, I, I'm not sure whether it's a risk or whether it's just uh, a max observation, but um, we talked about the dot-com era and we talked about fintech. And there was a word that I really began to dislike, even at the time, um, as I've been an investor in fintech, I, I stopped people from using it in my companies, and that's the word disruptor. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> oh, <no>. actually, <laughs> the future is not about disruption. It's about collaboration. And I think you've got to understand what a blockchain is. I still, I still find it painful to see that organizations are trying to use blockchain technology intra intra organization yeah. <laughs> come on right um the the whole premise of blockchain is it allows us to collaborate build ec ecosystems where uh trust is is handled in a very different way and therefore i think also alex for, for me the the, the future success, even in DeFi, is about people collaborating with each other. And, and, and there's certainly some, some things I'll, I'll talk about later, if you wish, um, that we are focusing on at Zilliqa mm. to try and foster more collaboration with people that you would think would be our enemies or our, our competitors. I, I don't, I just don't, I don't go for that. I don't that's believe so that. well put, and, and that's really the right mindset for us to grow faster, right? If we don't want to be stalled or have so many obstacles. And that's the perfect segue to the next question that I had for you, Max, because, you know, we see currently not only it's a rich man's world in terms of yield farming, it's very limited. It's very geeky, as you mentioned. There are multiple layers, mu connecting smart contracts. It's quite complicated yeah. in terms of interface. It's buggy. There's some smart contract risks and all the risks you talked about. So my question for you is, are the current legacy blockchains going to go to zero? You know, kind of like a Netscape or AOL type example where, you know, the third generation blockchains like Zilliqa, like Cardano, like Elrond, like Cosmos will end up taking over because of the lack of scalability and interoperability. Is, the, is this uh, a little bit too far-fetched or uh, what is your angle on this? I, I, th I think your analogy is, is a very, very good one. I think that there are going to be platforms that will become crypto dinosaurs very quickly if they can't solve some of those risks. One other thing that, that I, I, I forgot to mention, of course, which you've just reminded me of is usability. You know, we've got to work together to make this ecosystem much more usable because you try and explain how you do some of some of this funky stuff that people are doing with yield farming right now, it would make most yeah. people, you know, it would make most people's heads spin. Yeah. Okay. So I think that, I think that you, you, you're going to have to evolve or face the fact that you'll become extinct. Yeah. I, I completely, I completely go with that. I also think, Alex, that just like any other phase we've been through, we're going to see consolidation. We're going to see evolution. We're going to see people integrating with each other. Why? Because we, we have, we've got to collaborate. Yeah. Interoperability becomes super important. And again, you're, you're too young to remember this, but you know, in, the, in the 90s and, and the, the 2000s, there are, these, there, there are these companies called systems integrators that have grown like wildfire, mm -hmm. right? So, I don't know, Accenture and some of the big yeah. Indian players in this space, Tata, et cetera, et cetera. Why so? Why did, they grow, why did they grow like this? Well, it's because back in the 90s, and, and certainly, certainly um, in the early 2000s, you had large enterprises using these things called enterprise software. They couldn't talk to each other. So Oracle couldn't talk to SAP. You know, and, and you were supposed to be able to, to knit all these things together. So along came the systems integration industry and they figured out how to make these things talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So today in the blockchain space, when people talk about interoperability, that's what we're talking about. We, we aren't going to move to a world where there's only one blockchain mm -hmm. protocol, only one play. Different players are going to find their own niches, mm -hmm. but we're all going to have to work together and 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 talk to each other and build these bridges that i'm talking about 
because that could be the salvation from some of these chains that are facing technological issues right now. Mm. Um, that we, we can solve them if we work together. So collaboration, not disruption. Oh, same same thing. That's really, really nice. Yeah. And obviously in terms of scalability, like Zillica has proven that, you know, in terms of transactions per second, throughput, you guys are very advanced. Is this what Zillica is focusing on at the moment? Interoperability is the main key for, I don't know, 2020, 2021. What, what are you guys planning to really specialize on? There has been a, a big play this year, and I've, I've personally been very closely involved with it, to um, make Zilliqa more commercially oriented. And so you may have seen recently that we've announced that our chief marketing officer, whom we hired only six months ago, um, is now our chief commercial officer and co-CEO, uh -huh. along with Amrit, so that Amrit can focus on the, on the technology and making the platform better. Whilst um, Colin, who's a commercial person, can help to bring more adoption, commercial adoption to, to the platform. So adoption remains a, a very, very key goal. But in terms of the, the technology, there is a lot happening right now. So we are well and truly ensconced in the world of the stable coin. We think that um, Stablecoin initiatives, and we're working on a very interesting um, uh, ZIL-based ASEAN stablecoin pair oh, initiative wow. right now nice. that I think is going to, to make token-to-token -token, uh, exchange uh, far simpler, simpler, more cost-effective. Um, so so there, there's a lot of work going on what I call market infrastructure. Um, but at the same time, we're also looking at usability, even greater security, um, I can talk about it, but but you know we are uh, we are very very soon going to open up uh, non custodial staking oh, on the platform. Nice. Um, we've been talking just in the last week about the creation of a governance token called the GZIL, gain um, strict supply, limited supply, and the whole idea is to slowly. Uh, but steadily move towards decentralized governance of, of the protocol, of the chain. This is coming. You know, the DAO is, um, is, 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 is on its way as far as I'm concerned. This is super exciting, but it's going to be a steady work towards that, that, that goal. You may have seen that recently we had some tr great initiatives that came out of some of our team around social pay um, using... Zill as a reward mechanism for social media users. And there, there were some amazing projects we, we, we ran um, that were incredibly successful. Um, the last one we ran had a total gas cost of 1.4 cents. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, total cost, right? Oh <laughs> which, is, which, is, which, is, which is crazy. But again, it's all about garnering mainstream adoption whilst not um, veering away from, you know, the higher standards of safety, security, and usability. So, so those are some of the things that are that are underway at uh, at, at Zilliqa right now. Sounds very exciting. It seems like you know these days, like proof of stake and staking in the blockchains is going to be probably the next hot topic. Do you see that coming along as well? Uh, obviously, Cardano's focused on staking. Yeah. Binance just announced the same thing. Zilliqa is working on this. Is yeah. that the 2021 topic of the year? It feels like many, many years that yeah. people have been talking <laughs> yeah, about POW it, yeah. versus POS. Yeah, and if yeah. you know anything about Zilliqa, you, you will know that we, um, you know, our, uh, our, our protocol works in a very, very unusual, unusual fashion because yeah. we use proof of work, work right. but in a, in, a, in a very minimal way for mm -hmm. identity, in fact. And so I think that proof of stake was really theoretical even, even a year ago, a year ago. But now I'm beginning to see people starting to make it work. Um, I still believe that there are, there are different ways that you can achieve staking um, by, by using seed nodes, for example, as we're doing at Zilliqa with people like Binance, for example. But, but I think proof of stake is the, you know, it's, it's the holy grail for, for staking, of, of, of course, that goes, mm -hmm. goes without saying. But I still think we're, we're still in the experimental phase. Experimental phase. And um, time, 
still still time time to go to invest in in building that out and building that out yeah that's a really good point and i love your approach of proof of work but having some sort of adjustments right to to adapt to what has already been proven and that like you said last time in our first interview proof of work works do you remember that quote that was so cool sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> it was a great great line yeah. um and then i need to ask you of course of zill you know like zill is is gaining adoption and in terms of the 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 coin itself like where do you see the future utility you just talked about staking a little bit do you mind telling Telling us a little bit more without, of course, revealing too much. It'd be great to hear. Well, in I'm, I'm hoping that really shortly, very, very shortly, that you're going to be able to go to a test net and, and, and look at how non-custodial staking will, will work with, with, with Zill. Going back to something I may even have said the last time I had the pleasure of being, being on stage with you here, I, I, I think that we've just got to continue to invest got to take a long-term view uh, as, yeah. as, as we do we are you know we, we, we think like long-term investors you know we can't get too caught up in what's happening intraday right now yeah. um, because we have a responsibility to, to our community to, and to anybody that wants to build on Zill to to make this a, a sensible durable long-term platform yeah. and to just keep improving it and thereby I think you know the whatever the price of Zill happens to be on on any particular day um, is is not it's not really it's not really in our control because this market you 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 know how this market works right now and and you know in the last week the um, clearly the uh, focus has shifted from altcoins to 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 doing these other other very interesting things in in, in yield farming but these things are to be expected. Yeah. We've got to just take a long-term view, stay the course, and um, just keep evolving the, the, the technology and um, the use cases. Yeah, I'm really looking forward, uh, Max, to this tokenomics. I think, you know, there's going to be so much value. And, you know, it's really sad that some of the people from the traditional world think that it's a purely speculative space, which is not the case, right? There is real value. And uh, I'm very happy that, you know, projects like Zill will prove that with other projects with great tokenomics. So uh, really, really excited. I must ask you, Max, you know, before even being involved in the blockchain world, like you said, you've always been in love with fintech and finance and investments. As someone who has great experience in the investment field, do you mind just sharing some of your life learned lessons, you know, to the viewers out there on what you've learned to investing and, and give us a few golden tips, that'd be great. Not sure about golden. <laughs> Not sure about golden. Uh, but uh, I, I will certainly share with you my thesis, which is a very simple one, Alex. Uh, for me, um, investing in startups, particularly or, or early stage companies, um, I, I break early stage companies down, by the way, into two, cl two classes: startups, because companies carry on describing themselves as, as startups for far too long these days. The startups and rev ups. So that's a maxism. So I, I think that, that for me, a rev up is a company that has, has, has been, been through the, the hockey stick, was just about to go through the hockey mm. stick and has unlocked the growth potential of the business. And so in my experience, the most important thing uh, actually isn't the tech or, the, or, or even the business model. It's the people. It's the people. So for me, sometimes I've looked at a business model or a business plan and I think to myself, that's impossible. But actually, really smart teams of people, even if there are, there are three of them or five of them, can make the impossible happen. And so I, I, I completely would say that you've got to research the people. You've got to understand what their, their mission and their vision is. Why are they in business? Mm. And um, there are many, many reasons why people go into business. Sometimes actually not, not the right reasons, right? Mm. So to people, the second biggest error people make is they fashion a business around a personal pain point. Mm. So they, you know, they look, at, they look at this mug and say, if it was me, I'd, I'd really like a two-handled mug. Mm. And, and I, think, I think the whole world is going to want a double-handled uh. mug, okay? So unless we're Steve Jobs and there aren't terribly many people who can just say, we will build it, 
and they will come, we have to go out and do our research very carefully on what the market need market is needs. and is that market need scalable. Yeah. We don't build things just because we think there's a, there's a, there's a market. This is a, 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 a grave mistake a lot of particularly early stage entrepreneurs make. And so no matter how amazing you think that is, um, I, I, you know, I would urge anybody to do their research on the marketplace, even if you've got to pay a ton of money to understand the, the, the marketplace, that's, that's absolutely vital. You oh. can't build a business without, without, or invest in something without knowing there's a marketplace for that product. So those are, those are the two pieces of advice I would give to you. Everything else you can hire people to, to, to tell you about. You know, finance people, marketeers and sales people can, can, can tell you about all the other things you need to know. But those are the two things you've got to research very carefully for yourself. No, oh, really well said. It makes a lot of sense because a lot of people take their personal biases and believe that just because they had that problem that they automatically have market validation, which is not always the case, right? Always make sure that there's a need for that specific yeah. idea. Ab 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 absolutely. You, you, um, you have to have that. And in this time of crisis that we're in right now, those people that don't understand the power of, of, of marketing and really getting close to their, their, their customers is um, if, you, if you can't do that, it doesn't matter how amazing your technology is, you know, tomorrow never come. Yeah. Oh God, that's a, that's, that, that's a great movie, by the way. Um, uh, all these things are coming out today. It's very strange. They've been, they've been programmed it's into programmed me. In. Um, but, but, but no, no, ser seriously, you, you, you've got to learn how to get super close to your, to your customer, understand what they want, and, and you've got to be building and evolving con con constantly around that. It's not just about the tech, mm. for sure. So thank you so much for all these great insights, Max. And you know, it's a second time, but there, we need a third time and we'll, we'll keep doing these shows. For sure. Every time you're always sharing some great information, really interesting perspectives. And for those watching out there, definitely like, subscribe, comment, and blast that bell notification. You've learned hopefully tons of cool things such as being an investor, third generation blockchains, yield farming, the risks behind DeFi, and comparing it with the 90s with the dot-com bubble, with derivatives, and so many other interesting topics. So please do like and comment below. And don't forget to follow Max on Twitter. Are you the most active on Twitter these days yes. or LinkedIn? I remember LinkedIn. both. 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 Follow Max Cantelia on LinkedIn, Twitter, and of course, Zilka.com will have all the comments in the description box below. Thank you so much, guys. Premiering every Wednesday at 8 o'clock UK time. See you next week, guys. Take care.